then just know that we're, we've been doing this for 10 years and you might have only been doing this for two or three. So we've been like consistently establishing, you know, just a presence, a credibility, um, just keeping like putting our stuff out there for so much longer. And I try and remember people who are like just as good as me or if not like way better, but they have just been only like actively promoting themselves a lot less long. I'm like, hey, you're like 10 years behind me. Don't worry, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you'll get there. All right, Amy and Jen Hood from Hoodsman Design. What's up? How are you guys doing? Jesse, how's it going? <laughs> so glad you guys joined me today. You guys are uh, so talented, so busy, so crushing all of the things. Just if you can, like, if somebody doesn't know who you are and they're watching this episode, uh, give give me your like thirty second Wikipedia bio. Ah. Uh. Okay, so so the, the fake information that's really exciting. Okay, anyone can change your Wikipedia. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna give it. Legit. Okay, we'll go. We'll go. Yeah. We've been yes. a studio called Hutzpa for about eleven years. We founded it because um, the magazine that we were working at folded. We literally knew nothing about freelancing or running a studio, but we kind of learned everything by trial and error, and we ended up getting amazing clients just by mentors and peers and that kind of thing. And now we work with people like Disney and Target, and it's amazing. And um, we've learned a lot about freelancing, so we wrote a book on it called Freelance and Business and Stuff, and that's kind of the short of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's okay. We're gonna get to this because I love this book. Um, I actually bought this book. You guys released it like two or three years ago, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe. I bought it was twenty eighteen. Oh, is it? Okay. I bought I bought it like it's right when it came out, and like I read it and took notes in it, and like the page. I've read it so many times, like some of the pages are coming out. So like, love lo it. Love, love you guys' it. books. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I'm going to send you and, a, um, a new copy that you can, you know, mess up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, let's start back actually from the start because you guys said you worked for a magazine, that magazine folded. Um, and did did you, I mean, what, like most people I feel like would say like, oh my gosh, I need security. I need to run out and find another job. But you guys took that dive into, hey, let's do this thing ourselves. Like let's take an adventure and let's start freelancing. So what was that choice to not go for a new nine to five, but instead create your own thing? Why did you make that choice? I mean, it's, I wish it was like so straight up bravery. Like we always knew we did want to do it. We were always super entrepreneurial, but at that time we just couldn't get hired. Like we were unhireable on paper because I was a community college dropout. So it was Jen, you know, uh, no associates, no, no bachelors, not, we had actually learned uh, on the job through apprenticeship, which I would highly recommend if anyone can do, but I understand that that's like a rare option. It's such a rare option. And we were so blessed to have a friend who offered that. It was just a guy who came into my coffee shop, Jason Staggs, who knew I was a hard worker and knew I was like floundering. And he was like, hey, uh, have you ever thought about design? And I was like, yeah, you know, I took a design course. And he was like, well, I need a designer. I can teach you on the job how to use InDesign, you know, Illustrator, everything, and you'll get paid. And I was like, this feels like skipping a step. Like, I don't even need college. This feels like <laughs> I'm skipping the whole college thing. It's not that I'm dropping out. And uh, so I took the job and he said, do you know anyone else? And I was like, I know Jen, she will be great. And <laughs> I know somebody, you'll really like yeah, her. It's going to be great. It's built in. Yeah. So, um, but it was amazing and we learned everything on the job, but it was like a coupon clipper. So it wasn't like a magazine magazine, even though we totally made it feel more like a magazine because we wanted to have great work that we were proud of. But at the end of the day, when your portfolio is just like, you know, like, um, I don't know, Zumba ads and like carpet cleaning ads. Like it's really hard to get hired, especially if you don't have a degree yeah. and you've only been working in the industry for three years, which we only had, you know, three years experience. So we started Hudspa and, um, you know, we just kind of started trying to make friends. We met some people at, um, through our work that worked at other magazines that were really helpful and just like teaching us the ropes. And then we met people like Mark Hemian and Josh Hemsley and Joel Buchelman at a local meetup. And they were so kind to be like, what are you charging? Yeah, don't do that. That's way too low. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they just kind of were so generous with information. And we learned really quickly, like what we were doing wrong and what to do right. Yeah. Well, that's, you, I feel like we have like very similar stories because I was like, uh, uh, got out of the military washing like dishes and waiting tables. And my then girlfriend, now wife was like, you should probably do something with your life instead of just play guitar uh, in bands <laughs> and wash dishes. And I was like, yeah, that's probably true. 
And she had been to art school and said, like, hey, I'll show you everything I know on a bootleg Filipino version of Photoshop 7. And Totally. You, we had a bootleg, You too. could just figure stuff out. I was like, okay. So I just started making really bad band flyers for a really long time. But I was did. also very That's unhirable. How we all <laughs> yeah, I was yes. super unhirable. And I got an apprenticeship at my church working in the media department and learned more on the job and parlayed that into a job and then parlayed that into freelance. And so I feel like so many people out there feel – like they need to go through a program. They need to have yeah. some sort of certificate. They need to do some sort of thing. But the people that I know tend to be like, yeah, I kind of stumbled into it, figured things out as I went, maybe lied a little yeah. bit on a resume and it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just some light lying. Yeah. You know, it's like good. you need two qualities, which is kind of like that uh, naivety or, you know, blind courage, one or the other to get you like into it. But then also the kind of panic and a healthy amount of panic and fear to be like, shit, like we have to work really hard or otherwise this yeah. won't work. They'll find us out. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise everyone will know we're frauds. And yeah. um, which hopefully eventually you start kind of, you know, shedding that. Uh, more negative side, but I don't think it ever goes away. Sure. To be honest, I think yeah. that's why we're kind of good at what we do. We're very competitive. As twins, it's built in that you're very competitive. It's like, <laughs> oh, you course. think you're that? Well, I'm this. <laughs> and it's um, it's like been this healthy thing of we just always want to get better and do better and see how far we can go, which, um, you know, it took a long, I'll just, I mean, it took a, quite a bit to get like really rolling. Like when we do our freelance course now and we have a Slack with the students in it and stuff, it's so interesting to see how fast they can get up and running to like a yeah. really healthy level because they have have like a framework and you know they're given some like foundational tools where it's like damn that took us four or five years to figure that out you know no isn't it amazing the reason i started my youtube channel is because i read photoshop blogs and illustrator blogs and would scroll all the way down to the bottom see the finished product try to create it absolutely mm -hmm. suck at it go back to the top and then follow the steps and i was once i got kind of established and i knew what i was doing i was like I, I just like, I, I wish I had somebody to tell me the things that I know now. And so I started a yeah. YouTube channel. Like, I just want to tell people the thing and maybe yeah. be helpful, but it kind yeah. of pisses me off a little bit how fast people pick up on stuff now. I'm <laughs> you, like, that's you not like fair. You slightly begrudge your students. You're like, oh. There was no Happy freelancing you, but... courses by people with yeah. amazing skills and, and like, and willing to share their information to me like you guys would in your book or your course. There was no, like, there was not this stuff. And I'm just like amazed at how, if people, like you said, have that little bit of competitive nature. They're resourceful. They're kind of motivated. Man, if they really stick to it, they can just like elevate their skills and their abilities so quickly. I feel like nowadays, totally, um, yeah, totally. I just wild. love the sharing of. I like that you guys have built in the sharing of knowledge and and sharing all the your experiences. Um, you know, with other folks, I think that that's an amazing thing. Uh, but I do want to tap into kind of two things you said. You, we talked about apprenticeship a little bit, but the other thing was, I know that in your book, in the forward, most people don't read forwards, but I do because I'm super nerdy. <laughs> um, you thank your mentor, your business mentor. And I want to talk a little bit about like, because you said it as you're transitioning, you found some mentorship. Like who is, not who is that mentor, but you know, <laughs> what was it like having a mentor? What did you learn from that mentor? And how crucial has it been for you as you've grown, not just in design, but also in business? Oh, I think it's so, it's so crucial. And I feel like it's so easy to be like, I have to ask someone, you know, I have to give someone the rose and ask them to be my official mentor. But I, I find that it's so much more fluid than that. It can be, you know, you don't have to make it this like high pressure thing where somebody has to say yes or no. Like you can just start asking people questions. And if somebody starts answering and giving you help for inf helpful information and that dialogue continues, that's your mentor, <laughs> you know? And right. we had tons. And the interesting thing is the one that was probably the most helpful was uh, a family friend um, who was in a completely different industry to us, but they just had a very, like, we, we're much more like, oh, everyone's our friend. Like if you're our client, like you're our friend tomorrow. Like, and you kind of, we kept trying to give like friend rates and deals and like, everyone's like, you know, everyone gets a friend rate. Everyone, <laughs> it just wasn't working out. And he, uh, he was much more like practical, uh, you know, basics of business focus. And was like, Hey, here's a few things like, yeah. And, um, so we started going to him for a lot of advice just on, it's like, how would people in the, in the world beyond design handle? like questions like this because business is business to a, a large degree and then we can you know like we know the creative side but the business side like we just were not as comfortable with and to know that someone right. who had you know done this for so long had these kinds of like hey just do this it'll be okay like you think it's weird but literally this question is asked constantly yeah. like ask them for this change on the contract it's not weird if they think it's weird that's actually more strange because this is a large company
company and people have probably asked them for revisions before. So stuff like that, just letting someone who's been there, letting us know it's okay to push back and yeah. create boundaries and things like that. But then a lot of our friends became mentors, people who we would look up to on Twitter. We'd follow them, interact, kind of like we both, you know, met on Twitter. Um, and it's like, you know, you end up asking questions and getting great feedback and it becomes almost like peer mentorship, which is great, yeah, you know? Sure. Right. Yeah, I think that's I love that like that you guys think of mentorship in a more casual way, in a less official way. Like I need to ask somebody, they need to accept the rose, like you said, but instead like <laughs> there's so much that you can learn from from people. I mean, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of people out there right now who consider you to be kind of that distant online mentor. They watch your stuff, mm -hmm. they read your book, they've gleaned and gained so much value from you. It's like you're you are kind of mentors to people in that way. But then there's I other people, like you said, peers, people who have been there before you, people outside of your industry. I'm actually part of a mastermind of people yeah. who are kind of tangentially connected to my industry. Yes. Some people are SEO specialists. Some people are run development studios. Some people do completely different stuff in the wedding industry. But I love hearing how other people might think about this, like this process or this issue that's happening. I'm like, doggone it. Like I couldn't get that just necessarily from a room full of designers, you know, yes, it's really, exactly. really powerful. Oh, yeah. masterminds yeah. are amazing. We were a part of one for a while and everyone just got really busy and you know, a couple of things, reasons why we don't do it anymore. But I've been thinking like, it'd be great to get something like that set up again. But if you think about it, we have a few, like we have text threads with friends That's true. Yeah. that are very transparent, which I would highly recommend if you find friends that are in the yeah. creative world that you just enjoy like shooting the shit with really, but that you could also just be transparent with like, Hey, I'm about to charge this for this. And they kind of understand your world. It's like, does that sound crazy? And here's the thing you never ask every and somebody else, like, what do you charge? Like, how do you do this? Right. You say, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? <laughs> That's the polite way to yeah. ask for transparency. Cause it's funny. Like we offer a lot of transparency, but still if someone comes up to me and says, what do you charge for this? I still, I'm like, okay, that's a little like, come on. Like there's like, uh, that's a little we weird. worked hard to get where we are. Also pricing is just way too fluid for me to just tell you like that. My number is your number. You know what I mean? There's so um, much nuance. There's just, like, yeah, there is, you ones. know, so, and I don't want you to go off and like post it on a blog somewhere. Like they said, they <laughs> charge this for, so it's like, I am kind of guarded about certain information just because I know that it would be misleading to give it out. Like it's a, a one answer to the question, right. you know? So, yeah. um, but yeah, we have text threads with all kinds of people and just, you know, it's good. And it, it, just try to keep the relationships open. I find that at the older I get, Jesse, don't you find that it's like, the relationships will die if you don't actively like just text a meme, do anything to just kind of like keep the lines of communication open. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. trying to be really better about that as I like get further in my career. It's easy to kind of just isolate more and more. But well, I think that's those, something that yeah. you, you guys are saying, which is really interesting. And I, I do think it's a, a mature way of looking at it, which is business really at the end of the day is relationships, right? You treat, oh, yeah. you know, when we start out, we kind of we don't understand that you can have healthy relationships in business. And so we give everybody the friend discount. We're charging way too <laughs> low. You know, we probably love what we're doing. So we do it for free anyway. So uh -huh. we're like, that's eh, okay. But at some point we realize, Hey, a good friend would actually want to pay me what I'm worth. Right? So <laughs> we start learning how to straddle the line between business and friendship and having those relationships. But I feel like that's something that a lot of people are missing. So, you know, you guys work with massive clients. I, I'm, ESPN, Disney, Hulu, like Seat Geek, Adobe, like you guys, you guys did the stuff for like some, like the titles for like the greatest showman and Luca, didn't you? Like, come on. Like we were on going... it. It didn't, our concept didn't make the final, but we were in a group of, <laughs> uh, of you know, a brain trust of creatives that worked on it. And uh, it was close. To be in that yeah. room I, is like yeah, mind no, That's how I feel about it. That's, that's how, how I, I feel. feel. Yeah. Actually, yesterday, our friend, Neri Rivas, who does work at Disney and um, will bring us in on some cool projects, he posted um, something that did finally get used, like something that we worked on him with, and it made the final, final cut. And I was like, oh, happy day. <laughs> it's <laughs> called know? Rise, and it's the story of Giannis Attentacumpo's like, NBA career. So it's super cool. Yeah. Super Amazing. Yeah. It. That's yeah. so awesome. But I mean, you work with these massive clients and somewhere out there, you know, there's plenty of people who are less experienced going, well, that's not fair because they know the right people or they're just like, I, they have some sort of skill or some sort of in that I don't have. But I just want you to speak to a little bit about doing good work and then getting word of mouth and oh, how yeah. much of and like, 
Oh, it's everything. It started from zero. I'll just say it started from zero. Yeah, we okay. had no connections. Cool. Zero no connections. connections. Like, no professors. No. I mean, we were working at a coupon clipper. We were the lowest magazine on the totem pole. Yeah. You know? like, so, so, but the, the thing also, like, if you're looking at us from the outside and you're like, okay, like if you're putting together your competitive analysis and it's like, these are like some people that I think I would eventually want to be, you know, in the same, like, you know, breath with if people were considering it. Then just know that we're, we've been doing this for 10 years and you might have only been doing this for two or three. So we've been like consistently, consistently establishing, you know, just a presence, a credibility, um, just keeping like putting our stuff out there for so much longer. And I try and remember people who are like just as good at me as me or if not like way better, but they have just been only like actively promoting themselves a lot less long. I'm like, hey, you're like 10 years behind me. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you'll get there. But um, but yeah, it's like it all started from just reaching out to people and we've never been really good at cold emails. Our thing was always reaching out on social because we wanted to be a little bit more personal, less of like an immediate ask and more like, Hey, I love everything you all are doing. Like, uh, you know, and more just interacting as a person, even if it has nothing to do with design. And that actually right. served us really well. Yeah. We met a lot of great people that way, but then also just, I'm shocked still the power of social media, which I know could all disappear tomorrow because literally <laughs> like the tides of social media and what people enjoy and what people don't is completely changing. Sure. And like, you know, YouTube is such a different animal to TikTok. And so it's like, it doesn't always translate there. So, but um, still like we got um, 20th Century Fox from just an art director um, scrolling on Instagram and found us through hashtags and just found lettering hashtagged work. And then he, right. you know, got, they got bought by Disney. So we ended up working with Disney that way. Red Bull found us on Instagram by searching hashtags. And then um, I'm also just impressed with the other day or this week, two people reached out to me via email, cold emails to our info at, and one of them asked if we could come speak to their community college and it didn't end up working out, but I was like, Hey, I'd still love to record a video and send it to you and you could give it to your class and like use it however you want. So he asked and he's still going to get something, you know? <laughs> and then another yeah. person, uh, reached out and pretty much the next day I was like, Oh, I have something that that, you know, person could be good at. And I introduced two people. And then I was thinking about it like maybe four or five years ago, this development company gave us a candle. Like I'd never heard of them. They sent this like funny little black magic candle because their company okay. is called black magic. And I kept thinking I need to use them eventually because it sits in my house. And, um, and eventually yesterday I finally like referred <laughs> someone and I was like, I need to tell them that the candle worked. albeit four years <laughs> later. So it yeah. is the long game, which is annoying to hear, but it is a long game and cold email works. Like just do just, play the field as far as like making attempts to just make connection. It's interesting though, because you're talking about two things that feel like an oxymoron, which is like social media, very instant gratification in a lot of people's eyes, and then playing the long game, like understanding that these things take time. And so I feel like people struggle with that because because they see the amazing work you guys put on, on your Instagram account and they see your online presence and they go, I should be able to put up amazing things like that. And I'm, I, I'm with you guys. Like, I believe maybe I have low self-esteem. I'm like, everybody's better than me. Anybody can just yeah. like, there's so <laughs> many people on dribble and Behance and portfolios that are just designing circles around me. And oh, yeah. I, I'm like, so it's not necessarily my design chops. It's I'm willing to play the long game and be consistent and put myself out there and build those relationships yeah. and wait for the payoff. And a lot of people get frustrated with that. So here's, here's, I guess, maybe like my question based off of what we're talking about, how do you stay the course and how do you know when to pivot? How do you know when you're doing the right thing and when you're doing the wrong things? I think it is hard. I think you're right though. Consistency is super key. And um, it doesn't have to be like consistently posting every day on Instagram, but it has to be consistency in um, the level of work you do and keeping in touch with um, people at companies, you know, whether it's just sending them an email, if you see that their company has released something, like be a champion for others the way that you want them to be a champion for you, because, you know, it will come back if you are putting it out there. But just expecting that, like, no one's reaching out to me if you're not also reaching out, you know, that's kind of a one sided uh, relationship there. But as far as like staying the course and knowing kind of when to pivot, um, that one can be tough. But you, I think for us, we, we are really, really practical. Our dad is like very money savvy, like all about savings. So was our grandmother. She was had all these hilarious like little, um, you know, sage uh, sayings of like, you know, a dollar in your pockets better than, you know, a dollar spent, you know, like this kind of thing. And um, so we always do profit loss statements. And um, we try to keep an eye on like, which of our projects are the most lucrative that we love the most that um, also seem to be like the most desirable to our client base. 
And it's like, so we're constantly trying to figure out, okay, do we need to pivot more towards, you know, this kind of service? Like, this is really going well for us. We really enjoy it. Maybe this is like, maybe we can like expound on this further. And then there's also a point where you look at it and say, okay, we're making enough money there to do the passion stuff that we want to do and to make time to play the long game over here. So it's not just all about the profitability. It's just saying, okay, we know that we're at least covered and we're being smart and, you know, we are going to have money coming in. And that leaves this part open to play around. And I mean, that's why we started, we've always wanted to do products. I think every creative has a dream of starting a brand and (laughs) most of us shouldn't, but here we are. (laughs) And um, so as far as like a clothing or apparel or goods brand, I mean, you know, Um, but we we did try and do something like that. It was called Odds and Sods, and we had a blast doing it. We did make it like, you know, it paid for it. Like, I liked it. I followed it. Yeah, I was excited it was about profitable. it when it was there. It yeah. was fun. And it was so fun. Like, it, it was nowhere as near profitable as our, obviously, services, no. but it taught us so much about that world. And a lot of the skills that we learned from there actually translated later to working with clients yeah. or just putting together different products that, you know, sold way better, like the book or, you know, the course. So it wasn't for nothing. Although, if you were to look at it, it would look like, oh, we probably should have quit while we were ahead. It's like, well, as long as we weren't completely underwater and we were still making money to, you know, and it was still covering for itself and making money above what we were paying for it. We were willing to right. keep putting time into it because we enjoyed it. So there's also that side, like, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, so I do um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I decided to start doing that when I was like 37 years old. I don't know why, because I just, <laughs> my body didn't hurt enough. But, uh, but one of the things they constantly teach you is because you're constantly getting choked out is there is no losing. There's winning and there's learning. And so there's it, living, I'm kind of, there's living to th- see another fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. There's living to be choked out again by another person. So another day. It's, but you can, I, I apply that to business. Like I'm going to try things that I'm passionate about that I think will work. Sometimes I'm going to hit dead ends. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I've launched two or three of those t-shirt brands that have gone absolutely nowhere and gone. Okay. We've all done so it. What I've, what I've learned is Jesse doesn't do t-shirt brands. Well, we're going to do other stuff. <laughs> no, like, same. Uh, same. We, it gives yeah. you such a respect for like Josh Ariza who yes. runs Chomp or brand, like, like a one person show or Sam Bergini. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just like people who can actually make uh, an apparel brand work like hats off. It seems so good simple, for you. But it's like, I'm no, just, no. Yeah. I'm like, good for you. Not for me. You do that. I'll <laughs> yeah. buy it. I'll really appreciate there we it. Go. You know, we will. Yeah. We you. have a, we have but- a, um, a common friend, Joel Buchelman, who like for mm-hmm. a hot minute decided to start uh, like a running gear brand. And I was oh, like, right. the same thing. Yeah, I was like, I'll buy one of those. Give me one. I like to go yeah, for yeah. runs, you know, but I'm like, yeah, what, I, I could probably, it was a simple design. I was like, I could probably just make this and print it on my own shirt. But I was like, two things. I want <laughs> to support a, Joel, what he's doing. Joel's, Number yeah. two, I just buy your stuff. It's just easier. It's not my vibe. That's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah. But I do, I agree with you there. And I really respect people who put themselves out there and try something. No matter what, people take notice of people like that mm-hmm. because um, you're a self-starter. You're a go-getter. Um, and no matter what, you're going to learn something from that experience. If, you know, if you look back on it and try to be retrospective, you know, of like, okay, what went right? What went wrong? I remember when Mark Hemi and they did design Inc and they did, what was the other one called? It was like, it was almost like a TikTok thing, but, um, it, it failed. And he did this whole like postmortem of like, this is why it failed. And like, I love that and wrote it on medium and shared it with everyone. And it was like, wow, he really helped the community learn from that as well as, taking stock himself of like, okay, the next time I do a startup, the next time I have an idea, like how do I avoid what happened this time? You know? So it's all about being retrospective and just applying the lessons learned. If you learn something, it wasn't a failure. It's just a pivot. And, um, yeah. I feel like, okay. I, don't get me wrong. Like you guys, the work that you guys put out is phenomenal. It's like top notch. And, and I think that like the, the, constantly moving from one project to another, doing good work. It's, it's huge. But I truly believe that like you guys have named your agency really, really well. Cause that like word that chutzpah is like that moxie, that go getter kind of attitude. I feel like, do you feel like that's something people can learn or do you feel like that's something that people innately mm. have? Absolutely. We forced our students to I'm do interested. it at LCAD. Oh yeah. We okay. made them. We, um, we taught a course at Laguna college of art and design about, it was called professional practices. And it's all about, you know, the business side of being a creative and being, you know, business smarts, that kind of thing. And we gave them homework. They had to get on Twitter, which they hated. They had to create a Twitter account and they had to reach out to three people every week and just start a conversation, just make a comment on their work, um, ask them a question. Um, and ideally it was companies they wanted to work with or mentors that they looked up to or peers that they wanted to start a relationship with. And every week they had to put themselves out there And then we also, they also had to do a a project that they could have on their portfolio 
that kind of positioned them in a way for the, the, the work that they were passionate about, not just the projects right. that you get that, you know, we all do portfolio reviews and there's always the same projects that you see. You're like college project, yeah. college project, college project, you know, so it's like some sort of real world, um, whether it was for a charity or just personal project to like do something that they are passionate about and then put it out there and post it. So they hated it, but we would always say, okay, now who's gotten responses back? And literally like what, eight out of 10 mm -hmm. would get a response back from a peer, a mentor that they looked up to, or somebody they looked up to that could be a mentor or a brand that they really admired. So it really does work even though it feels really awkward. Mm -hmm. It's wild, right? Like people yeah. don't believe that age old, like put yourself out there, like law of reciprocity, like make it happen. No one's going to make it happen for you. I, I feel like it's the diet pill of our industry. That's like, I just put out that one really good post. Ooh, everything will work out great. Why isn't anything happening? I'm not getting any traction, you know? So I yeah. wish I I, 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 I agree with you. I think people can learn it. I think it's the harder thing to learn. I think it's much yeah. easier to learn the technical aspect of, mm -hmm. of design and color and all the things you need to do. But I also, I just think it's much harder to learn the go-getter attitude. And I think it's oh, so yeah. cool that you guys, I think part of the reason that I loved your book was because when you talk about freelancing, you talked about things that were not just, um, Hey, here's how you set up a website or a portfolio. Here's the type of projects, but you go into budgets, you go into profit and loss statements, you go into saving money and all. And it's like, those are the things that people go, Oh, I don't like, I don't want to read this chapter. This is not the things Boring. I'm really excited about. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the things, as soon as you see a chapter that you're apprehensive to read, you're like, that's yeah. probably the chapter I need. That's probably for me. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> the one just for you. Well, yeah, you know I'm, what I was really inspired by when we were writing this book? Have you ever read the book, How to Be a Graphic Designer Without Losing Your Soul? I have for that book. It. The title yeah. is incredible. I mean, the title caught me and I was like, I need this because <laughs> I feel very lost right. having not gone to you know full college for it. But I loved how he was uh, very practical, but it was very funny, like, you know, and um, just kind of more down to earth. And I felt like, oh, okay, he's writing in my kind of sensibility, you know? Yeah. So it is interesting um, how you can think, oh, it's all been done before. There's a million books on business, literally. And, sure. um, but we were like, you know what? Like, maybe there's some value here. Like people seem to be interested in how we started and um, you know, they clearly want maybe this unique perspective. So if you're out there and thinking, well, you know, Jesse already has a great YouTube explaining <laughs> things and so-and-so already has a great YouTube explaining things and you also want to start a YouTube, there really is room for different perspectives and people want different things from different people. You know um, I mean, if you just think of how much content you consume and I consume, it's like, I'm watching like six shows on the same topic from different people. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, there's, there is so much room to do more. So I wouldn't, that's another thing that I encounter a lot of people are like, ah, oh, it's already, everyone's already doing that. It's like, oh, there's yeah. so much. Room. I mean, the proof is and in the pudding. We're going like, to age out eventually. So you yeah, take up the exactly. banner, you know? <laughs> yeah. The proof is in the pudding. Like this is why there's like full sections in Netflix and Hulu of true crime, because there's a million <laughs> true crime shows. Like how, how many, uh, what is like the, like the famous one, like law and order, how many law and <laughs> orders are there? So I many, know. but it's just with a different style, which I think is really cool because you guys write the book in your style. You guys run your Instagram account, your portfolio in your style. It's, it's reading. It's just like talking to you, right? Which is really cool. And I think there's something about being your authentic self everywhere. That is for me, I'm just, this is just me. I talk with my hands a lot. Like we were talking about before we started the pot, like the show, like we interrupt each other, like, and I'm cool with that. I'm cool with me. I'm not everyone's cup of tea though. And maybe somebody else who's a little bit more introverted, like is a little bit different, has different experiences, maybe their YouTube channel would serve a different demographic better. And I'm all about that. I think that's amazing. I love that though. That's good that you know that. It took me a while to learn that. It's like, we can't be everyone's cup of tea and we need to stop worrying that we're not. And you just need to <clears throat> lean into like what you are and you know what you can offer. And I always think about it. It's like, what do you perceive as your own negative or like something that you're lacking in? How do you turn that into a positive? Because that actually makes you uniquely you. And that sounds like really gimmicky, like some Brene Brown quote or something. I've never no, seen anything she's done, but I hear about her endlessly. <laughs> Brene, you're everywhere. But um, but it's like, you know, for us, it was like, oh, we're too small. We can't compete. We're too small of a studio. And it's like, no, no, we're a boutique nimble agency. Like that's our strong suit is that, you know, we'll work 10 times as hard. We'll, you know, any client will be our big fish. That might be a small fish to somebody like Pentagram, you know, right. so using those, taking like what you might perceive as like, why am I seeing this as a failure? It's just because like maybe mainstream, this is not what people normally think of as, you know, the best option. How do I 
convey that this is actually a strength in disguise, you know? Right. Absolutely. I think one thing I want to like touch on because we're kind of getting close to like end of our time together, which is you talked about work. You talked about doing really good work, doing lots of work. How do you two balance work and life? Because I think a lot of creatives in the creative industry, you can work, work, work. You can always do more work. You can always try to find more clients, get new clients. But at a certain point, you might start burning out. It starts to get unhealthy. And for me, the last thing I want to do is continue to work at that pace and then just take a yoga class on top of it. That's not work like balance. <laughs> How do you guys balance and still have a life and run a successful agency and do all the things you do while still staying healthy and, and you know, enjoying right. your life? Well, I will say that I think when you go into this world of working for yourself, you kind of have to enjoy and be okay with imbalance, to be honest. Because it's just never going to be quite as comparable to working a nine to five where the boundaries are so defined. And when you go right. home, it's no longer your problem. It's just never going to be that way. And if you think it is, then of course, you're always going to be frustrated with you know your life. So I think in some ways you have to kind of enjoy, um, like you have to enjoy it enough to where it's like the, the, the good stuff outweighs like maybe some of the longer hours and potentials. Now I'm not right. saying that forever we've always we're going to work ourselves to death, but early on, like we did work quite a bit because we had to establish ourselves and there was a lot to be done to just make it. Sure. And so I think you kind of have to go in knowing that there's going to be probably a little bit of imbalance to be honest for a while First. until <laughs> you, you know, for a few years while you're just laying the groundwork and getting the systems and getting it, you know, well oiled, getting a client base and then after that, you can be more protective of the boundaries. But right. um, and even the same way, though, it's like it's sometimes feast or famine. And also when you get you know big enough, you get to say no. Mm -hmm. So you, in the same way, though, it can be imbalanced in that. Like you can say, like, I don't really want to take on that much work. I'm just going to do one client for the next two months. And that's an imbalance the other way, which is great. Mm -hmm. So you have the freedom to say, like, I'm taking Fridays off for all of summer, which we've been doing. <laughs> so it's like, you know, there are there are perks, but it can be a lot of work at first until you get your like systems and procedures kind of set up. And um, sometimes yeah. despite best laid plans, if you're a small studio, there are weeks where you're working really intense hours because for whatever reason, you know, the schedules got off and you know, you still want to get that great workout. So, I mean, you do, you have to be careful with yourself and that's why it's so important to have other <laughs> things in your life that are important and valuable to you that your job is not the only thing you're judging your value based on because sometimes right. like, especially in those stressful times, it's like the client's not saying yes or, you know, you didn't get the approval that you wanted. It can be really easy to just take it so personal and you, you have to kind of just be like, I made my best case. I did my best. They don't want to take it. I have to kind of just now like separate my emotionality from it and just get it done. To be honest, like we're that kind of people. We're like, well, we'll just get it done, and we either we won't show it or we'll just know that like it was a negotiation, and that's life. Like you never put out. I mean, you think about movies and how many people are involved in making movies. It's a it's right. a miracle anything ever wins an award because you have so yeah. many people <laughs> that anything's in, good. <laughs> yeah, you have so many people weighing in. There's so much potential for like one person throwing it off, or so you can't really think about it. Oh, it wasn't my perfect. Video. Vision. It's more like we negotiated it and we did the best we possibly could with these circumstances. And I'm proud of that, you know? So yeah. I think we got off from the original question, but generally <laughs> no, that's good. you can't I love plan it. for stuff. You have to be flexible. Yeah. You have to kind of, and you have to enjoy that and love the results enough to where it's like, it makes it worth it. And then you take a lot of like, you know, recoup time after those yeah. busy times. I that's guess. what we try to yeah. do is if it's been super busy, we say, okay, the next month we're going to be super, we're going to, you know, take, take some time and not go too crazy. And we do try focus to focus on some personal projects and yeah, fonts absolutely. and, you know, yeah. that stuff that we just enjoy and that makes us happy. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that that age old saying, right? Like blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. <laughs> and I think not, That's I think it. everyone, everyone seems to have, which I really appreciate from you guys. Like everyone seems to have like, Oh, here's how I stay balanced. And here's how I, like I do X, Y, and Z, but I, I love your guys' really authentic thing, which is like, sometimes life's unbalanced. Like, sometimes <laughs> that's the way it's going to be. But I do agree that, like, the benefit of sometimes things are a little bit unbalanced because the boundaries are kind of set by you, right? Yeah. It, it, also, the freedom boundaries are set by you. And so yeah. you may not be able to shut off work at, from 9 to 5 and come <clears> home and be like, okay, nothing's on my plate anymore. But you also get the benefits of mm -hmm. running your own business, like sure. running your own life, making your own schedule. Some people... Or maybe, and I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like some people are, may, may not be fit 
to be an entrepreneur or be a freelancer. 100%. And it's not even that I they agree. couldn't. It's just like, it doesn't jive with their life right. goals and values. Yeah. And you have to be honest with yourself. It's really like glamorous to think I want to work for myself, but sure. you have to kind of think of the trade off and like you, so there is going to be more required of you in some ways, but you will have a lot more liberty in others. Yeah. And the and buck just, stops with you. Like if you don't get it done, it doesn't get done. Yeah. So some days it's going to be a lot of work. Maybe yeah. you're at a phase in your life where you just really want to just make sure you're home in time to like, you know, have time with your kids or whatever it is. And maybe that that means like you work for someone else where there's a little bit less like completely riding on you and that's fine. Right. There's nothing wrong with it, you know? Yeah. But, I think like, Jesse, you just really... went to Jamaica. Oh, so I did. You I just... did just go to so Jamaica. So it's like you, like you probably book like, you know, healthy vacations to make sure you're not, cause we're both very competitive, like uh, productive oriented people where it's like, we would just work ourselves to death. I'm sure if we just let ourselves. So have you gotten good at making like that, you know, specific time for vacation and rest? Yeah, I'm trying to get better at it and I'm trying to, uh, like, my wife and I are both very, like, we, we love to work, right? We love mm -hmm. to do stuff. We love projects and we could work and project ourselves. Me doing client work. She, she's an artist, photographer, does all sorts of stuff. We could always find something to do, but I'm starting to try to, uh, view rest as a project. Right. So oh, it's something yeah? like, I need to work at this. I need to make, am I putting any time into this? I'm kind of failing at this then. And so it's the same way. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, if by the end of the week, if I go, how much time did I spend to stay like physically fit and healthy? Zero mm. minutes. That sucks. Like I must, yeah. I must, <laughs> my value system right now is not set up in a way where I really respect and honor those things apparently. And mm. like you said, sometimes it's flexible. Sometimes it's like, man, I really value establishing this YouTube channel right now more than anything. And that's okay. But I just, mm -hmm. I, I like that you guys are talking about being introspective, about looking back and kind of figuring out, just uh, reassessing, you know, like yeah. what it is, where, where you've come from and what that maybe means for now and for the future. Um, you know, because I, I want to be a healthy person, happy person. It seems like you guys seem like you guys just have this really fun, awesome, healthy, happy vibe. <laughs> I'm sure you probably have times where you scream at the ceiling like everybody else does. Well, and, there's a lot of cussing, yeah. But I think we purge it immediately <laughs> and just move on. <laughs> yeah, you got to let yeah, it out. Like, our like, ah! oh, okay, sorry. Okay, fine. <laughs> no. like, you know, Fantastic Mr. Fox where they'll just get, the animals will get like feral for a moment and then they just kind of like get back to normal. That's, That's us. Yeah. yeah. Like how we do it. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes the pressure needs to get relieved. Absolutely. Well, tell me, <laughs> you were talking about passion projects versus client work. Obviously your client work's amazing and you've released some brands and done some different stuff, but you guys are really like, um, typography, lettering, like illustration, like a lot of that stuff is like in your realm, which is not in my realm. What kind of mm -hmm. things are you working on right now that you're really passionate about that you really are excited about? Well, that is the fun thing. I feel like everyone's always trying to figure out how to diversify their income, right? Just to kind of you know, figure out if you can productize something for yourself, that kind of thing. So for us, um, I remember when um, Dustin Lee from Retro Supply Co. reached out to me and he was like, you do a lot of letting. Have you ever thought about doing a font? And I was like, no, this is interesting. And he and I did a font together that we called Palm Canyon Drive. And I had so much fun. It was such a blast. And I was honestly, I was like, no one's going to want this. And it, it absolutely blew up. And I was like, okay, this is like a really you know, this could be like something really great for us to have for ourselves, you know, so that we're not having to rely so much on client work and everything being like right. time spent, you know, of our own. So um, we started kind of thinking about like a couple, I think it was like maybe a year later, we were going to go do creative works in Memphis. And um, I made some lettering and it went over really well. People were like, oh, I love this lettering. And I was like, maybe this could be a font. So it's just like kind of taking little steps of like doing the littlest thing to kind of dip your toe in, test it with do people even like this? Like, is anyone right. interested before I spend 80 hours? <laughs> you know? It yeah. is funny. They were like, you know, make a little side cash, but it's like first you have to put yeah. in 80, 80 hours. hours. Yeah, exactly. Well, not for everyone. You know, the display stuff that's more funky and whatever. It's like so much more fluid. But if you're building out a family, like we're realizing yeah. how much, how labor intensive it is. But at yeah. the same time, I really enjoy it. I feel like it, it feels like doing yoga and that it's like very, once you've got the, the main forms down, it's like you just kind of plug and chug. And, yeah. Uh, it feels really yeah. good. Therapeutic for yeah. sure. Yeah. And fonts are yeah. interesting. You get, like you were saying before about judging things and whether when you should cut your losses, fonts was a totally different game because you, you have to be in it for the long haul because people don't right. buy fonts usually on impulse like they would other products because they need to use it on something. So they have to keep seeing it until the right project comes along. So yeah. you have to be okay with this kind of more long game. And uh, that was an interesting learning curve. Yeah. You guys are man, blowing my mind right now because – so I I uh, heard an interview that Dustin Lee from Retro Supply Company did on the Smart Passive Income with Pat Flynn 
like years ago. That's what turned me on to him. I heard him talk about productizing his business and I was like, he's so smart about it. Son of a gun. Like I need (laughs) to productize somehow. I need to create something that's not just me constantly billing for my time. Right. Cause I love doing client work. Don't get me wrong. I love designing. I do a lot of like web design, UI design, UX design, love working with clients. I'm working with some rad clients right now, but it's like, I can only make as much as the yeah. hours in the day and that I'm able to bill for. So my exactly. next step was like, okay, well, I could raise my rates. Let's raise my rates. And I raise my rates as much as I can before clients start saying, sorry, no, we can't work with you. That's just, a, it's obscene. That's an obscene amount of money. <laughs> it has that's to, obscene. It, <laughs> I go, okay, that's great. (laughs) I'm going to back it off a little bit and hang out here until I can push it. It's not obscene anymore. But, but the revenue stream and productizing my business has had to come into play at some point. So here's my question, because I am starting to productize a little bit. I'm like courses, templates, different things I'm selling, and it's going really well. I love waking up in the morning and having notifications on my phone. (sighs) It's instead of made money while feeling. I was sleeping. Isn't it like Christmas oh, every day? The little WooCommerce app will go cha-ching when yeah, somebody will like, cash oh. register. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's like, just the feeling. It. Oh. It's the people, it's the feeling of joy, right? Like oh. angels are singing somewhere and I love it. But I, it's starting to become like, how, how much longer am I going to do client work? Can I ever really give up client work? And I wonder what you guys think. Would you ever give up client work because your fonts, and your products and the things that you're doing, your courses, your books are selling so well, would you ever consider saying, all right, I guess I'm done with client work? I have a su- super strong opinion about this, too, which is yeah. that never, never, yeah. ever, ever, because I think the level of the client service work we do now, which it wasn't always that way, but I'll say now I'm so proud of where we've gotten. Yeah. I think that lends a lot of credibility to the products we sell and why that makes it appealing to people who want to do similar work or have a similar like trajectory where they're coming from, you know, um, a little bit more humble (laughs) beginnings. And um, I think that's what makes it, um, that's what proves that it's worth it in a way. Like the, the service work proves that like, and I think it keeps you sharp. I love collaborating. Every time we collaborate with a new client, I'm like, I learn so much. And yeah. I, you know, we're hopefully also giving as much value as, as we're getting, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. just seeing the internal workings of different companies, mm-hmm. sometimes I'm shocked at how it's run just like us. Sometimes I'm learning they have this, you know, these great systems or just their mentality on something is really interesting. But I find just having those collaborations, it's, it's a lot like having peers to bounce ideas off of. You're just seeing another yeah. way, another facet of how, you know, business can be done. And I find it super fascinating and I think it keeps us sharp. Right. Yeah. Hundred percent. I think I think it keeps us sharp as well. I'm I'm in the same camp as you. I'm I'm totally not just like like trying to like jump on your side and like <laughs> and make make you feel good. I I know a lot of people who have left client work behind and gone fully productized, and I just don't feel like I could ever do it because I love those experiences. Not only do I feel like it keeps me sharp, but also the things that I create for clients tend to be inspirations or things that I learn and experiences for new products. And I don't know how yeah. I would drum those up on my own. Um, yeah, so once you. I, Remove yeah yourself from that world. Like, how do you continue to teach on it and and speak on it relevantly? If yeah. now you're relevant. just referring back to what you knew like five years ago, five, and then yeah. it becomes ten yeah. years, and now it's like now you're really getting Absolutely. far <laughs> from from you know. Yeah. What what advice would you give to people you know who are maybe just starting in the industry who want to find um, their type of work that they love to do, their type of client that I feel like you guys are sharing just so much knowledge that's, that's learned knowledge. It's all experience, but how does somebody kind of, can somebody fast forward that process? How do they find what they love to do and who they love to work with? I actually think that niche who soon it's almost impossible to do because you just don't know. You don't know. And to be honest, if you don't have enough clients, I think if you niche too soon, you actually completely limit the pool and you never had, you didn't have enough to begin with. So I think you have to keep it really, you have to keep an open mind as long as you're capable of performing those tasks, of course. But I think Keep it more general until you've done enough work to naturally know like, oh, okay, I have enough coming work coming into where now I can actually select and I can select right. based on knowing that I've already done a wide variety and what I'm better at, what pays better. And you can make like an informed decision, but it, it is really something interesting because when you learn about business, you are taught to niche and specialize almost from the get go. But at the right. same time, I think you can think of that more as like a future goal rather than actually being really strict on it. Like I've seen really young designers websites that say, I specialize in, you know, brand for, in a really specific industry. And I'll say for this, 
but it's like now your client pool is so small and you don't have very many connections. Like you've kind of just like really limited maybe even being able to make it as a business, to be honest. So I'm kind of like yeah. of the mind that like, yes, go in your general vicinity, but keep it fairly open and, until you kind of naturally make the selection. I feel like when the two of you talk, I'm thinking checkers and y'all are playing chess. Does any, are y'all like feeling like that right? <laughs> The, st Not the strategic, the strategic way that you guys think about stuff is um, super, like inspiring, super motivating to, <laughs> oh, to thanks, hear hear the way that you think about things. It it's not just yes, niching is great, like you're saying, but like, are you thinking about your client pool? Are you thinking about your reach? Are you thinking about like you know all of those things? So there's so many facets to all these little aspects that I really think that people just listening to you guys talk, taking your course, buying your book can learn so much from, can get so far ahead um, than oh, if they so wouldn't nice. have those years of knowledge. So thank you guys so much for taking the time and, and just sharing your knowledge. You know, where, where obviously people can find you, you know, chutzpahdesign.com, can find you on Instagram, same thing, chutzpahdesign and Twitter. But where, what else are you guys doing? What else is interesting? Where should they be looking for you? Yeah. Um, let's see. Jen's working on a new, a new site for our course that'll have like a lot more free resources. And we're going to try to just gather great things from around the internet in one place for freelancers looking to learn. Um, that'll be freelanceandbusiness.com. Yep. And then, um, yeah, we're releasing new fonts all the time. Um, what else? Anything else exciting? Maybe that's it. That's yeah. it. That's kind of it. We have a TikTok, but we don't use it. Um, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll try. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You want to talk about fearfully right. putting yourself out there. The most terrifying <laughs> experience is oh. making TikTok content. <laughs> TikTok videos. I know it's cause I'm not 13 and I don't understand <laughs> I it. So, well, Amy and Jen, thank you guys so much for taking the time today. Uh, everybody should go buy the book, take the course, you know, buy some fonts, support what you guys are doing. Cause you have supported the creative community by just pouring out your value and your knowledge. So I just appreciate you guys so much. Oh, same, same, same to you. Same to you. You yeah. put out incredible content yeah. so regularly. It blows my mind. Yeah, yeah so. definitely. Oh. Thanks so much Thank for you. having us. Absolutely. Thank you guys for coming on and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.